In America, everyone counts, and the 2020 census is how that great promise is kept. Respond today online, by phone, or by mail, and help inform hundreds of billions in funding for education, health programs, and more. Shape your future. Start at 2020census.gov. Uh, the Trump administration continues to fail the nation in doing so. Now the FDA, they have issued an emergency use authorization to the Yale School of Public Health for its saliva direct COVID-19 diagnostic test, which uses a new method of processing saliva samples when testing for COVID-19 infection. According to the FDA, the saliva direct test for rapid detection of COVID-19 is yet another testing innovation game changer that will reduce the demand for scarce testing resources. The NBA and the NBA Players Association, they have been working on this along with the folks at Yale. Joining us right now is Dr. Carissa Colbreth, Chief Medical Director of Infectious Disease Diagnostics at Tricor Reference Laboratories. Glad to have you back on Roland Martin Unfiltered, uh, Dr. Colbreth. So, all right, so, so explain to folks, you know, the difference between this. I, I have to take a COVID test tomorrow because I'm doing a, a work in a documentary for Showtime, and so I must take it tomorrow. <laughs> Uh, I don't know what the test is going to be. They might put that damn thing way down my nose. I don't know exactly what it is. So uh, uh, what you know so far about this test, what makes it so unique? So this test uses saliva instead of the nasal swab um, that I think a lot of people have experienced. And it's not the most pleasant experience to have the nasal swab. And so the benefit of this test is that it uses saliva um, to test. It would be similar to anybody who's done an Ancestry um, or a 23andMe type of test where you um, spit into a tube and then that tube is sent to the lab for processing. And so... Right now, and, and, and like we have, there are some tests out there uh, that, that comes back false positives, uh, those rapid testing machines. And that's also one of the issues because, uh, and from what you know with this, how long is it going to take for, to have the test and then get the results back? Because that's one of the issues that people have is that some people have taken the test and got the results three weeks later, and hell, they might have caught it between that point and the last test. Right. Right. So, you know, that's been one of the interesting pieces of the communication related to this test. Um, this is not a rapid test in the same way that we think about rapid tests. Um, this test is generally processed on the same type of machines that the nasal test is processed on. So you should not think about this saliva direct test in the same way um, that anybody who's had a strep test at your doctor's office uh, where they put the swab in your throat, they go into a room and five minutes later they come back with a result. That's not what's going to happen with this test. These tests still have to be processed in what's called a CLIA high complexity laboratory. Um, and so it, I, I'm concerned that we are going to face the same type of um, testing challenges that we've been facing with the nasal swabs. I think this is a good innovation forward to using saliva, um, but it doesn't quite get us to the rapid diagnostic that would provide immediate results to the patient um, that's, say, in the doctor's office waiting for a result. That innovation um, is yet to be identified. We're now seeing more of those type of tests, those type of rapid tests um, are being approved. There was another FDA approval that just came out today for another rapid test. I think we need many more of these rapid tests um, that can be in doctor's offices, um, in, in nursing homes, um, in emergency rooms, urgent cares. Those are the type of tests that we need um, that are close to the patient and we don't have to send the test all the way to a laboratory and then wait days to get results back. So the issue that we're having is not really with with what tests you take, but it's the processing of tests. It, the processing of tests has been the challenge that we've been facing from the beginning. Um, we've been facing supply shortages. Uh, we've been facing shortages with the swabs. So the saliva test is incredibly helpful because now we don't have to depend on a swab, but we still have to get that saliva sample to a laboratory. It still has to go on a machine. And I, the other thing we have to point out here is that we have highly trained clinical lab scientists that are running these tests. Um, and our scientists have been working day and night to get these results out. We need to have less complex tests that can be performed at a doctor's office um, so that we can get the results back in a quicker manner. But we need those tests to be accurate, 
We need them to be sensitive. That means that when we uh, look for the virus, we would are sure that it's there. And when we give a negative result, we're confident that the result is negative. We also need to make sure that they're specific so that if it's positive, we can trust that the result is positive for coronavirus and not a false positive result. All right, Dr. Carissa Colbert, we surely appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Back to our Mark Unfiltered video in just one moment. As our community comes together to support the fight against racial injustice, I want to take a second to talk about one thing we can do to ensure our voices are heard. Not tomorrow, but now. Have your voices heard in terms of what kind of future we want by taking the 2020 census today at 2020census.gov? Now, folks, let me help you out. The census is a count of everyone living in the country. It happens once every 10 years. It is mandated by the U.S. Constitution. The thing that's important is that the census informs funding, billions of dollars, how they are spent in our communities every single year. I grew up in Clinton Park in Houston, Texas, and we wanted, to, we wanted new parks and roads and a senior citizen center. Well, the census helps inform all of that and where funding goes. It also determines how many seats your state will get in the U.S. House of Representatives. Young black men and young children of color are historically undercounted, which means a potential loss of funding for services that helps our community. Folks, we have the power to change that. We have the power to help determine where hundreds of billions in federal funding go each year for the next 10 years. Funding that can impact our community, our neighborhoods, and our families and friends. Folks, responses are 100% confidential and can't be shared with your landlord, law enforcement, or any government agency. So please, take the 2020 census today. Shape your future. Start at 2020census.gov.